John, when was the last time you actually fronted your own group on television in this country? Uh, it was a good few years ago, actually, in, in a Ronnie Scott series. Uh, I remember doing it from Edinburgh once, but I can't remember how long ago that is. Quite a long while. Why has it been so long? Well, I think really because uh, I and Cleo have just been touring all over the world, I guess, for so long now, over the last... Uh, uh, ten years that there really isn't time by the time we get back and unpack our things it's time to go again you know and so that we we do do quite a lot of television overseas but uh, uh, but that's nearly always together and of course we do some here as well but that's nearly always together as well I believe you had some very good news about uh, Cleo today yes a ma as a matter of fact this very day we heard from New York that uh, Cleo's been nominated for a Grammy Award which is the you know the uh, American Oscar equivalent for records for the best jazz singer in the in the states with uh, as a result of her record that she did with Dudley Moore of all people Fantastic. so it's a, a, an all British thing there okay. so who were the musicians that uh, turned on the young John Bankler well the first one was Benny Goodman first of all I, uh, I first started playing music that I wanted to play on a tin whistle uh, I suppose James Galway might have been influenced uh, to me if he'd have been around at that time but he wasn't because uh, he plays the tin whistle, but then I went from there, realised that the clarinet was a nice instrument. Directly, I heard Benny Goodman play it, and said, "That's what I want to play." So I took it up and uh, took it up seriously as a classical uh, trainee at the Royal Academy of Music. And I'd been playing it for a couple of years when I inevitably started playing the saxophone as well. And uh, then, just as I left the Royal Academy. Uh, I got a job on the Queen Mary to, uh, as a ship's musician to go over and hear what was going on after World War II in uh, 52nd Street and all the jazz haunts in New York. And that was the time that, that Charlie Parker uh, came up. And so the first time I went to New York, I heard Charlie Parker play, and that was me bedazzled. You know? But running through all that, I was uh, interested in being a writer and a composer as well. And the one person who really... Uh, loomed over everybody else as far as I was concerned was Duke Ellington and uh, when I first got my first record which was a 78 record which I bought as a result of working for a week on the paper round and getting five bob for it I made sure I had uh, a, a, a double-sided record that had Duke Ellington on one side and Big Spiderbeck on the other and uh, from then on I was Duke Ellington fan. John performing again on television with the own group has it meant putting together a whole new list of tunes. And there's only one debut tonight, and that's a, a sort of jazzy waltz that I've written called Triple Time, spelt T-Y-N-E, which uh, I hope the point is being taken by, uh, by people in this area.